Forståelse af klimaforandringerne. The processes that takes place in our universe from exploding stars and also dramatic changes in solar activity are affecting us much more directly than we ever dreamed of. Gennem årene har jeg fulgt Svendsmark og hans kolleger i deres kamp for også at blive hørt i en verden, der har vedtaget, at den globale opvarmning er menneskeskabt. The fact is, the clouds and water vapor have the biggest greenhouse effect on the Earth's climate. Men måske skal mysteriet om klimaforandringerne findes i de helt almindelige skyer på himlen. In times when everybody is talking about CO2, clouds are a really important factor of climate change. Without clouds, the uh, climate on Earth will be completely uh, different, and just small changes in the Earth's cloud cover will change the Earth's climate. So understanding clouds is a very, very crucial point. The mere idea that processes in space, and not just processes on Earth, is important for climate, I think is, is deeply fascinating. In 2005, we actually found experimental evidence that the Sun and the galaxy is determining climate here on Earth. But for some reason, no scientific journal wanted to publish this. It was a big disappointment for me and my team. There is a problem that has always been with us. New ideas are rarely welcome in science where particularly some young person not known in the field proposes some radical new idea he may experience great difficulty in getting it published the bottom line seems to be that instead of thinking of clouds as something being um, a result of the climate it actually sort of upside down it is that the climate is a result of changes in the clouds the first time I got an idea of how important clouds could be on the Earth's climate was when my boss Eichel Fritz Christensen made a discovery where they found a beautiful correlation or agreement between solar activity and the Earth's temperatures. The agreement was so good that it could not be accidental. And this was really a big inspiration for trying to understand and trying to use clouds as part of that explanation. this in 1991 it was at a time where everybody believed that the warming that had taken place during the century was mainly due to carbon dioxide increase man-made greenhouse gases uh, so uh, when this community saw this perfect nearly perfect correlation between solar magnetic now magnetic activity changes and temperature they were very surprised What we could see was that when the magnetic activity of the sun was larger, then the temperature on the Earth was higher. Nobody had an answer to what kind of mechanism could be the cause of that. We knew that somehow the magnetic activity on the sun had to have an influence on the Earth's climate, direct or indirect. But how 
this would come about was a real scientific mystery. But one day, someone stepped into my office and mentioned cosmic rays. When I heard this word cosmic rays, it made me immediately think of an experiment I did in high school where we had what is called a cloud chamber. Inside the cloud chamber, you have supersaturated air. And when a particle, for instance, a cosmic rays go through, it makes a string of small droplets like a small cloud. With this image in my head, I thought, what if cosmic rays are responsible for forming clouds? And what if the sun with its magnetic field is capable of changing the clouds on Earth? Then we would have a perfect explanation on how the sun would be responsible for climate through our everyday clouds that we see on the sky. You cannot see or feel the cosmic rays, but they are let loose whenever stars die in supernova explosions. As atomic particles with enormous energy, they rush through the galaxy at almost the speed of light. And some of them bombard the Earth. But the sun fights the cosmic rays and controls just how many hits the air. In order to find out if cosmic rays affected clouds, I began to look for data. I collected satellite data of the variation of clouds in the atmosphere and compared them with variations in the cosmic ray intensity. There was a beautiful, clear-cut correlation that surprised me more than I ever dreamed of. Uh, the red curve is for the cosmic rays, you see the variation, and the blue curve, that's for uh, the uh, cloud cover. It means that cosmic rays are affecting the Earth's climate, and that's a fascinating thought, since it means that space is very and directly relevant for us. The magnetic field that comes out of the sun has more than doubled over the last hundred years. As a result, fewer cosmic rays have sprayed the atmosphere and fewer clouds has formed. The consequence has been a warmer Earth. When a strong magnetic field comes out of the sun, fewer cosmic rays spray the Earth. That means fewer clouds to keep us cool. But a lazy sun with a weak magnetic field lets in more cosmic rays from the stars. And in the air, they make more clouds. That's how the stars and the sun controls the Earth's cloudiness. The uh, suggestion was made by Svensmark in Denmark that this effect of cosmic rays is really important. And he based that on the remarkable correlation between t worldwide cloud cover and the cosmic ray intensity. The magnitude of the effect, if his speculations are correct, would suggest that that is as powerful effect as the present greenhouse effect or the brightness variations of the sun. It remains to be seen now, of course, as to whether that effect is valid, but it is a major contributor to this whole process that needs to be investigated very carefully. This, this idea with the cosmic ray modulation of the cloud cover is probably the most interesting uh, mechanism today. If, if that was a building... And what is found in this research results from, from Denmark is that there's a very good correlation between clouds and the cosmic ray modulation, which we have measured for 50 years almost. But this shows that the, it's the sun's magnetic field that's very important for how the sun appears. And that's very important to understand 
one cycle, and then can, we can go back and try to understand how the sun has changed on the long term. We know now the sun's magnetic field have increased, and we know the sun is more and more active. The, in, the activity has been increasing the last hundred years by a factor of two. If Svensmark's works is uh, confirmed that he's right about this idea, I think it will have big effect on the whole climate uh, discussion, because the, the clouds are so effective in in changing the climate uh, or trapping or closing out radiation. It's now important to do the research to try to understand this mechanism. And uh, so I think we should do, take this very seriously and, and try to understand this mechanism.